Well, good morning again. Hey guys. Hey, welcome to Daily Bread. Hey, it's, it's that time again, right? When you guys off to work, wherever you're going, staying at home, uh, always pray before you go to work in the mornings. Pray. You at home during the day. I'll uh, spend time in prayer. Prayer is not that I have to go spend 30 minutes in a corner. You can pray while you're walking around, while you're talking, while you're doing whatever you're doing with the Lord God. Again, it is communication, all right, with the supreme authority of the universe, and you need to know that, and that's Daddy God, okay? We're not talking about a man. We're not talking about an object or something. We're talking about the Lord God who created everything, and he created that for his good pleasure and his will, and you're a part of his good pleasure and will. And as we've been talking this week, and someone gave the question, you know, you know, well, well how do you know, uh, you know, that our prayers are, uh, our attitudes, our motives are open uh, before all in the approach. Well, if you remember uh, in the scripture where it talks about David, when David uh, counted, numbered Israel, it says that Satan caused him to do that. And when all of that happened, guess what? It opened up a barrel of monkeys that's, that David couldn't handle. There was an angel sent, and he began to wipe out people uh, because of that, that census that David did under the authority, under the guise of, you know, using uh, Satan's in influence to use him to do that. Uh, you have to know that everything that you do, this is why Paul told us to put on the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand. Why? Because your prayers, and you'll notice he had prayer in there, your prayers are open and your attitudes are open. So you can bring on, uh, you can bring on a demonic attack against you because of certain things that you're doing uh, within. Again, you hear me talk about self all the time, and people don't like to hear about self, but self is your problem. Okay, in fact, Jesus said it this way, yourself is the cross that you bear every day. That's the cross that you carry every day. Well, I'm going to carry my cross. No, your cross is you. I've seen people walking down the road pulling crosses and stuff. You know, I used to look at them and go like, they don't even realize what that scripture means. Your cross is you. Okay, you have to carry you every day and you have to crucify you every day. Okay, that's where your cross is. All right. Now, let's get back to prayer uh, because uh, this is Friday and, you know, and I was just doing this uh, because the Holy Spirit shares with me about what to do during the week and things. So, so let's go to the book of Philippians real quick, and let's uh, get in this note on prayer. We got we got a few moments left in uh, Philippians chapter four. Okay, this is uh, this is anxiety free living. Okay, this is what prayer will do for you. All right, uh, he says in verse six. Okay, Philippians chapter four. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer. Okay? By prayer. Everything by prayer. Not some things. This is, this is big things and the little things. Okay? Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Okay? And he says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And he says this, Finally, brethren, <laughs> whatsoever things are true. See, this is what we're talking about. What has God said that's true, you know? And, and you, know, we, you know, Scripture can't be nullified, so whatever he's spoken to you for you is true for you, okay? And so you go with that truth that he's spoken to you, okay? He may not speak that truth to me because that truth may not, not be the thing he wants me to use, but there is a truth that he speaks to you that you need to use for circumstances. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, all right? Now, these are the things that we bring to the Lord God. You know, we don't come to him. I've heard people say, you know, well, I prayed for my son for nine years and he got worse, you know, and he got worse. And then all of a sudden the Lord delivered him. Well, I thank God that somebody else was praying for him because if you're praying in faith, it might not take nine, nine months or it may not take nine minutes if you're praying in faith and if you really believe that the Lord God is God and he's going to do what he's going to do and what he said to you, not what he said to somebody else down the street, but what he said to you, okay? And so we see that these are the things right here in, in Philippians chapter 6 to, I mean, verse 6 to 7 here, all right? These are the things right here that when the challenge is greater than the strength, you pray. When the challenges of life are greater than the strength that you have, he says, be careful for nothing. Don't trust yourself. Never trust self. 
Well, I got an answer for this. Well, I got no. You go to the Lord and get a, an answer from the Lord. This is why I read all of this. You go to the Lord and you get an answer from from the Lord about that. Be careful for nothing, okay? But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, okay, you make sure that you carry everything to the Lord. All right, so that it's like when you have to sit down and talk with people. You know, I have to understand the pain in that person's heart as well as the pain that's in that person's heart, okay? We have two brothers that are, uh, you know, not in agreement, or two sisters not in agreement, or two families not in agreement. Well, you have to understand the pain, whatever, because every heart is different. Your heart is not like my heart, okay? There are things that we know and we take in by knowledge, but your heart is not like my heart. God made all of us different. We're like better than snowflakes, okay? So you have to understand there's a pain in that person's heart, an understanding in that person's heart about a situation and in this person's heart about a situation. And so before you sit there and deal with that, you have to always pray and say, Lord, you're the interpreter of every heart. Show me the interpretations that I need to understand so that I may make a judgment call that's going to be a righteous cause, a right call. Are you guys with me? Well, most people can't stand confrontation, so they never get involved in that anyway. But Prayer helps you to understand and to meet the needs of things that when they approach you. So what we have is when the challenge is greater than the strength that you have, you make sure that you always stay in prayer, okay? And we go to this last one today. This is in 1 Peter chapter 5, real quick, okay? Now, I've just talked a little bit about prayer this week, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in these morning sessions. Please, this is by no means <laughs> all there is to prayer, okay? We could talk about prayer for a whole year and still never covered. It. It's the most important privilege that we have with the Lord God to develop intimacy with the Lord God, okay? In uh, 1 Peter, all right, he says this in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, uh, and verse 6 actually says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, okay? Colon, all right, we continue. That's what it simply means. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. What's your care? Most of the time it's called an it. All right? It's bothering me. It's keeping me down. It's got me sick. All right? It's troubling me. Okay? Most of the time, the cares that we cast on the Lord, it has a name. We call it an it. Okay? I wrote a bunch of them down. Uh, it troubles. It hurts. <laughs> it's the disease. Uh, can't get rid of it. It wears me out. It talks to me too much. Here it comes again. I can't take it anymore. It. <laughs> Most of our cares are called it. Okay. Well, the Bible tells us to do this. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Same thing Jesus said over in the book of Luke. You know, when you, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Why do you think that your father won't give good things unto you? And he says here, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, all right? That's the one who knows your motives. All right? As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So the enemy knows your motives. He knows all these things. And this is why we have all these warnings about him. But we also have the grand privilege of coming to Daddy God, knowing that if we come to the Lord God in faith, as Jesus said in the Acts in his name, we shall receive the things that we've asked for. And so I pray that you take these things. He just says some foundational things for you to build on your own personal prayer life and, and your work in prayer and your intimacy with the Lord God. And use these things not just to, to say, I pray today, but to use them to build that intimacy with the Lord God so that you and Daddy God, you and Jesus Christ, you and the Holy Spirit, and you and the brethren that walk on the earth of God, guess what? That you can walk in agreement and have the things that you desire in your life. God bless you. For the Lord will withhold no good from those who walk uprightly before him. So walk uprightly before him. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you here Monday morning on Daily Bread.